Father's Day is fast approaching, so make a card with macaroni and glue and purchase a department store tie. Or maybe this year, you could invest 80 minutes in helping your dad actually understand you. Both sides of my family take almost boastful pride in the heritage of many successive generations of faithful Mennonite Christian lives. My father is the most Christ-like man I've ever known. And as long as I can remember, he was a leader in our church, holding the highest offices and positions of most importance with honor, perseverance, dignity, and the respect of everyone. I can only imagine the pain it caused this godly man to find out that his beloved son no longer believed. Unfortunately, the opportunity for me to witness that moment firsthand was taken by someone who felt compelled to out me to my family before I was ready. Of course, for most of my life, I did share my father's faith and was radically on fire for Jesus as a teenager, in part because of the youth activities that fed me a steady dose of euphoric experiences. One I remember well was a youth conference at Briarcrest Bible College near Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. They loaded us in vans, drove us hours from our parents, let us consume unreasonable amounts of sugar, arranged accommodations to facilitate minimal sleep, packed us tight into an auditorium for a guaranteed constant tactile human contact, played sweeping swelling music that triggered just the right endorphins, and presented a charismatic preacher who could inject us with guilt over every natural thought we ever had, then show us the path to make that guilt go away. That preacher was Tony Campolo. What kind of church you belong to? And one of those moments when you come up with just the right words... I said, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning. I thought that was a clever answer. I'll never forget his response. He looked back and he said, no, you don't. No, you don't. He said, I would join a church like that. He got me to walk to the stage in Jesus Affirming Altar Call twice that weekend. In the years that passed, Tony went on to serve as spiritual advisor to President Bill Clinton, and become a regular on TV shows like The Colbert Report, Larry King Live, Nightline, and Crossfire. But before that, he was preaching to hundreds of thousands a year in places like the Canadian Prairies. While I heard Tony's name every now and again as my life progressed, I knew nothing of his son Bart until I heard him on Seth Andrews' Thinking Atheist podcast in early 2017. Tony Campolo's son is Bart Campolo, who was also, for a long time, on the order of decades, a Christian evangelist and minister. But today, Bart no longer believes in the Bible. Bart Campolo is today the humanist chaplain at the University of Southern California. While my story with my father was obviously of much lower profile than Bart and Tony's, I felt we had strong parallels. I knew Bart and Tony were working on a documentary and a book that would explore their post-deconversion relationship, but I didn't think much of it, even after having had the pleasure of meeting Bart in person. But a few months ago, circumstances had my father and I alone in my house, needing something to do to pass an indoor evening. A one-on-one -on -one father son night like this has been rare since before I had my kids, and our overlap of television interests is generally limited to the news and curling. But this night, Bart Campolo came to my mind, and before I knew it, my father had agreed to watch the documentary Leaving My Father's Faith. It wasn't as though he said, there's something I gotta talk to you about. It literally came out of the clear blue sky. I'm done. Yeah. I don't believe any of it. And here we are at the impasse. And you say, well, you couldn't possibly believe that. Yes, I do. Leaving my father's faith doesn't require or assume that you've heard of either of these men before. And starts the film by introducing larger-than-life Tony. For years, everywhere he would go to speak, they would come up to him and say, you're just like your father. I mean, I still get that even, even out there in the world. Like, I get that in banks. I get that when I get a, go for a job interview. So, I, I, I'm a fan of your father's. Like, oh, jeez. Now, I have to confess that I did exactly this to Bart when I met him. I opened with a story about his dad. He was so gracious, but it was stupid of me. Bart, if you ever see this, I'm really sorry. The film goes on to tell the highly relatable tale of Bart's own journey into Christianity and gives a glimpse of their ministry glory days together. Having made you care about both of these men as humans, the documentary lets us into Bart's mind as his faith deconstructed, represented on screen as a Jenga game wondering which piece will cause the eventual topple, leading to the movie's centerpiece, a series of heart-to-heart -heart conversations with these two men in the same room trying to find a way to understand each other. These are the kind of conversations that Shannon Q's subscribers aspire to.
They are honest, respectful, loving, and highly invested in each other. Dear Bart, your departure from Christianity obviously upsets and embarrasses me on many levels. But what upsets me most is my fear that it will drive a wedge between us. I worry that after a lifetime of closeness, you may stop wanting to talk deeply with me because I feel like some kind of alien. What changed and what, why did it change? I didn't know this was going on. But God did. I hear that constantly. Do you know what that's I mean? Because that's what mo mo many, if not most, Christians tell. You never learned that from me. No, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying, thank like, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you can make the Bible do whatever you want. You, you can. Send me a list of the books that you read that undermine your faith in Christianity. And the first book I put at the top was the Bible. <laughs> he was losing confidence in script in Jesus because he was losing confidence in Scripture. Oh my goodness, this is just a human document. If all you get out of the Bible is what you read then you're not getting the word of God. I'm right here. I'm in my brain. If you cut this part of my brain, I won't want to have sex anymore. And you're like, that's a big part of your identity. I'd be like, yeah, it's right here. And at that moment, I realized that I didn't, I, I no longer believed that there was anything beyond this life. I was blinded by the promise of eternity. We, we, we I, like, I don't believe it anymore. I don't believe any of it. It was like somebody put a knife in my stomach. Uh. Yeah, and that was a hard conversation, I think. Very hard. He was devastated. He was so sad. No. Yes. Okay. I say no. I say yes. Leaving the Christian faith is the result of disengaging from that plausibility structure. Let me finish. Okay. You asked a very important question. You're saying, T Tony, you're wrong. Die no, I'm not saying, you're, you're saying wrong. I'm wrong. People do not die that way. And I'm just saying. saying they don't have to die that way. How much do you value your integrity? We started to have a conversation. I have to do that because otherwise our relationship would be inauthentic. I don't yeah. want to communicate to any of our viewers that it's an either or situation, that either you're a doubter or you're a believer. And it's been painful for me. So the fact that we're in congenial relationship here, talking and caring for each other, don't think that this has not been a very painful you process. You lost sleep over this. I have. Uh, you were my son. You were, I, I think at one time you actually... whom you were well pleased. <laughs> yes, I used that word. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's doing good for people all over. Now, that he doesn't use the word Christian is not a negation of all of that. Equal screen time is given to father and son. This is not an atheist film. This is not a Christian film. No winner is ever declared. No man is right and no man is wrong. Instead, this is the story of a father and son trying to understand each other and love each other after a common bond disappears. I watched with my father in bated breath as Bart represented my own journey and feelings in language my dad could accept and understand. Now, Bart and I have a few philosophical differences that we could hash out over a drink, but the fact that a few of the steps that led him away from faith were different than the steps that took me away from my faith takes away none of the power. More importantly, my normally stoic father was moved by the experience and told me that Tony said many of the things my dad wished he had the eloquence to express himself. Coincidentally, my father and Tony would disagree on a few Christian doctrines too, but my dad said that his position had been represented well. When the movie was over, my father and I talked more openly on the subject than any time prior, and we hugged, both feeling understood by the other a little bit better. If your parent or another loved one is a believer, and if you've stepped away from your faith tradition, and if your relationship could use some mutual understanding and healing without having to engage in that personal debate one more time, I highly, highly recommend leaving my father's faith. It's okay to watch it alone and okay to recommend to your loved one, but if at all possible, I implore you to summon the courage to arrange to watch it together, you and your dad, in the same room. When the credits roll after a very quick 80 minutes, and there are no funny post credit scenes to set up the sequel, I checked, a real conversation can begin. I have no direct connection to the Campolos, nor do I get anything out of this recommendation, other than a hope for improved relationships for my viewers. Leaving My Father's Faith is currently streaming on Amazon Prime in the US and the UK, available on DVD, or you can rent it worldwide from Vimeo. You can find full details at campolofilm.com. Happy Father's Day.